Thanks once again for joining us for another edition of Web Chats. I'm Sabrina Storm. Joining me in studio is Ernie Hardiman, your MPP for Oxford. Uh, it is so good to have you here and congratulations on the election. What a successful campaign you ran this time around. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And it is a pleasure to be back here as your MPP as opposed to uh, uh, being in what should we say on the outside yeah on the running, outside running looking the seat yeah, yeah running for the seat so Which we're happy a, to be back it's an interesting process really and and you've got four more years ahead of you but what's it like in that transition when you know you have been the mpp for so long and then in the campaign time you have to step back what is that like well, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's somewhat different, but obviously it's a necessary uh, process. And when the, uh, when the election starts, every chair in the legislature is declared vacant. And so everyone has to start from the same, uh, from the same point. When my uh, people from the other parties who are running for the position too, um, they would be at a disadvantage if I could run from my office um, on, on Brock Street as opposed to being in the same category as they are, which would be to uh, set up a campaign office and uh, and start from uh, from scratch. No, you still have the advantage. You are still the um, uh, the incumbent. Yeah, that's right. Um, and what a, a race it was. I mean, I really feel like this time around uh, there was some competition out there for you. I think uh, NDP candidate Tara King, uh, you know, new to the scene, and I think she she had a, a strong campaign, uh, but. 29,000 votes uh, in your favor. Uh, I think that shows that your your longevity and your experience had something to do with the election this time around. Yeah, I, I think that's true. And obviously, um, I commend all the candidates who were in the race. Uh, having said that, uh, this was the highest number, not only in number of votes I got, but also the largest plurality uh, that I've had um, since I've been <laughs> in this position so it's been it was a very good a very good election but um, it was a strange uh, election to see one of the three main parties go almost to zero uh, it almost was like it was a two-way race with the uh, all the others being fringe candidates and that was a rather strange thing and uh, it was only the last election the one before this where in fact the liberals were not uh, in second place anymore and now to see them uh, drop that low it was a uh, Quite a, quite a challenge. So what does the future look like now? I mean, obviously, uh, as part of the, the PC party and it, it being a majority government now, this is sort of uh, fresh new territory. It's been quite a while <laughs> since the Liberals sort of have not been in power. So uh, what does that mean for, for you and in, in your representation with this party now? Well, I think it's it's very it's a very interesting situation. Obviously, I did my first two terms in Queens Park were as a, a member of a majority government, a conservative government. So it's not that new, but it is a it does change what happens at Queens Park. It changes very little in what happens in Oxford County. And uh, my job, which is the main part of my job, is to uh, uh, to work on behalf of the citizens of Oxford, regardless of who is in power at Queens Park. Uh, to run, look after the needs of the citizens of Oxford, and I have every intention to keep doing that, as I've done it uh, in the previous six terms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so on that note, i got to ask you a question I'm sure your wife has asked you several times. Uh, when will you decide to retire? Uh, not that we want you to go anywhere anytime soon because you've done such a wonderful job in Oxford County, but, you know, uh, 23 years is a long time, and uh, so... When, when will that happen, do you think? I, I think that's a very interesting question, and, and I've prepared for that six, for six terms now because I've always said when I run for office or when I ask for people to vote for me, it's four years at a time. I never talk about what I'm going to do beyond those four years. That's the four years I was elected for, and I will work hard during those four years to make sure that um, if um, – I was to put it to the people again to be judged that I would get a passing grade for past performance. <laughs> and that's really what I've worked on for all those uh, all that time that I've been there. And I have no intentions of starting to work differently uh, because I've been there uh, for some time. So we still don't know when <laughs> that's going to be. <laughs> well, I, I, well, and I, th I think that's true. Obviously, um, every... Every election, you're one election closer to the day when you say, well, you know, I think maybe uh, um, I've, I've done this as long as I should and I'm going to move on. Uh, it wasn't the last time, but uh, we're not looking. <laughs> 
Your decision, your decision to run again, is it uh, perhaps because there is some unfinished business still for you? Well, I think um, over time that has been part of it. Um, I've never been in my life, I've never done things um, to, um, to walk away from it when I, the going got tough or when things weren't the way they were supposed to. Um, I, didn't, I never wanted to leave this job on the opposition side of the house. So obviously uh, we're not in the opposition side of the house anymore. So uh, that challenge has been met. Uh, one of the issues that you have really been fighting for obviously is the landfill. So we uh, need to talk about that. Uh, obviously now uh, with elections you know, c coming to an end, uh, that it will be reintroduced. So what, what do you feel will happen in the, in the coming weeks and months? Well, I think um, obviously we have to um, get sworn in as a government and, and get transitioned. But um, I think at, at the for earliest opportunity, we'll move forward in trying to put this legislation back in place um, in, in to, uh, to get the second reading debate uh, through again to try and get it passed. So uh, I, can't, I can't put a timeline on it. Obviously, there's a lot of things that have to be done as you change. To, I'm not sure that uh, at Queen's Park that it's as high on the list of priorities to get done this week as uh, as it is here in Oxford and it is in, in my office, but uh, we will work with, um, uh, with the government to get it on the agenda again as quickly as possible. You've had other big issues that you have been successful with, so I'm, I'm sure that uh, the fight will be won. So. Well, I think, I think that's really the, uh, I think the things we all need to remember. Things don't happen overnight, but uh, perseverance uh, pays off, and so we're going to keep working on it until, uh, until we see success. Um, as I, uh, my previous private member's bill uh, with the carbon monoxide, uh, it took six years, and it took, uh, um, I introduced it five times before I actually got it passed, and, uh, and then all of a sudden, there it was passed and, and now implemented. And so I'm uh, looking for that same thing to happen with this one. Would you say that that is a career highlight for you? And if not, what else would be considered a career highlight? Well, I think there's a lot of things that you could take. I mean, getting a, a big new hospital in Woodstock is, is, is quite an achievement. But I think the, the carbon monoxide bill was, was something that you could do individually. It wasn't someone else's decision. You saw the need for it. You introduced the bill to solve the problem. And now you can actually measure it. Um, every time I, and I still get notices from people that I worked with, and they send me another newspaper clipping of someone who was saved mm -hmm. because of the detector. Um, I got one from somebody from Alberta who was here at the time when we did this bill. And their family of five, they called in, in this past winter and they called in that the, um, the detector went off and they were the level of carbon monoxide was lethal. If it hadn't have been for the detector, they would have perished. It's a measurable life-saving uh, piece of equipment and that's why you're so proud of it that you can actually at the end of each year say this is how many people didn't die in Ontario mm -hmm. because of that bill and so yes that's um, it's right up there the high the high end of uh, my accomplishments. Uh, going back to the election we saw a lot of uh, young candidates this time around. Um, I mean, Robert Van Ryswick, uh, he's not even in his 20 yes, yet. So um, how do you feel the, f the future, you know, once you do hang up the hat, uh, how do you feel the future of uh, politics in Oxford County is looking? Well, I think um, um, obviously everyone starts um, at a younger age and becomes older as they uh, as they move on. We all age at the same speed, shall we say. Um, I think that um, uh, when my uh, tenure as the MPP for Oxford over, I'm sure there will be uh, a number of people who would be stepping forward to, to fill that spot. Um, as, it, as it relates to age, I, uh, I was asked that question a while back, and I said, I'm reminded of the, the um, um, President of the United States, Ronald Reagan, who became the president at 68. Wow. And somebody asked him, he was running against a quite a, a bit younger uh, individual, uh, and somebody asked him, he, whether age would be a problem, whether he thought age would be a problem in this election. And Ronald Reagan said, I don't think so. At least I'm not going to make it an issue. I'm not going to once mention his inexperience. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> <laughs> that was a very creative way of putting things, and, yes. <laughs> and I think, I think really that's what it comes down to. It's not the age of what people are, it's their 
ability to to facilitate what it is they were asked to do and uh, so I uh, uh, I really don't put much age incidentally uh, of the in the campaign Robert was one of my favorite uh, uh, opponents uh, yeah. uh, he was he was a, a very articulate young uh, young man and and obviously uh, he didn't represent the the rank and file or the the, the main mainstay of the parties uh, but uh, he did a wonderful job explaining what he was running for and what he wanted to do and understood it all. When it finished, um, I did tell him that uh, how much I appreciated his, his efforts. But the way he spoke about the job, he really should be running for warden of Oxford County. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the <laughs> You know, because the he... Were yeah, he was, he was yeah. always thinking to bring government back to yeah. Oxford. Well, we have government in Oxford. It's called Oxford County Council. And, and uh, you know, we, we do have to do the job for Oxford, but th that part of it is in, in Toronto that we have to be there to do that and yeah. speak up for the people there. But commending him on oh, his oh, efforts. Exactly. And oh, yeah, oh, he did a wonderful yeah. job. No, all, I, all my opponents uh, um, did, did great work. And, and uh, you know, I was pleased to, uh, not very often that um, we can get through a campaign with so little animosity. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and you know it was it really was a, a great campaign in Oxford I believe and and we were very happy to uh, obviously to come out successfully yeah, but uh, and successful uh, the, the party obviously and uh, having a designate uh, premier Doug Ford coming in uh, let's talk more uh, generally speaking what do you think the party is going going to do for the province well I think it's it's a little early to tell uh, we're going to implement the uh, uh, the promises we made in in our in our platform as we were going through the campaign, but it's too early to say how how that's going to be accomplished in the short term or which are going to be longer term and so forth. Obviously, we have to uh, uh, we have to form government first. Um, at the end of the month, uh, we'll be sworn in as as a government. We have to, uh, the premier has to appoint a, a cabinet and and all this has to be in place, and then work forward uh, from there uh, to do the best we can to implement the, uh, the platform as quickly as possible for the benefit of the people. All right, switching gears, I know uh, one of the things you love about your job the most is uh, meeting and, and talking with the citizens of Oxford County. And I know the annual pig roast is something that you always uh, love to, uh, to, to attend and uh, meet everybody at. Well, y very much so, and and, um, and obviously we're going to have the pig roast in, in July again this year, but it's amazing how many times during the campaign, as I was talking to people, they say, are you going to have the pig roast this year? And I said, well, I'll have to get reelected first. <laughs> and uh, and But that's really, it's become kind of a mainstay in the community um, uh, that uh, sometime in July or the first part of August, we're going to have a pig roast in the park uh, to invite everyone in the city or everyone in the county that wants to come out and have a... Um, a conflab with the, uh, uh, their cohorts in the community, but also um, uh, to enjoy a, a great feast mm -hmm. of the food prepared and, uh, and grown in Oxford County. Well, I look forward to that. Uh, any words for the community uh, just about the, the campaign and, and supporting you over the last, uh, well, few weeks, a uh, few months, actually? Well, I think it's, it's um, emulated that, that uh, they put that faith in me again, and particularly um, after you've done it a number of times to see your numbers being higher this time than ever before. And that's not only true just for me in Oxford, but the Conservative Party in Ontario got more votes this time than it ever has in the history of the province of Ontario in one single election. So I think that really says that uh, the people want to change and they want the change as we were putting forward and that's um, a real positive as we go forward to uh, uh, to make sure that uh, uh, the people are with you on what needs to be done. All right. Well we look forward to seeing what you can accomplish for us in the next four years and thank you so much for your time. Well thank you very much for having me and uh, this is my first attempt at something like this. <laughs> we we ver very much enjoy <laughs> being here. All right. Uh, join us next time. My thanks to your MPP for Oxford, Ernie Hardiman. Join me again for another edition of Web Chats. I'm Sabrina Storm. See you next time.